thanks a lot for joining us, Matt. No worries. Thanks for having me. That's all. Um, by the way, congratulations on being signed by the WWE. It's a huge Thank accomplishment. You Thank you. First off, for people that haven't really heard of you or don't know about you, can you explain some of your background, like who trained you, how many years you've been wrestling, stuff like that? I was trained by primarily by Carlo Cannon, who I pretty much state that trained me, um, who actually taught me the, the main things about wrestling. I started wrestling in 2008, so I'll be wrestling for about six six years or something like that, 2007 or 2008. Don't really remember. Had <laughs> <laughs> my head too many times, I guess. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I've been wrestling for about six years, um, and yeah, I've been trained by Carlo Cannon. Beautiful. Um, which I give credit to. All right. Girl. Growing up, what wrestler or group influenced you the most? Um, I never had a, a favorite wrestler at all. Like I, I started watching in about two thousand. Actually, that's completely false. I started <laughs> watching in about ninety eight. And back then, you know, you watch everyone. You watch Stone Cold, you watch The the Rock, Triple H. You yeah, know, I'll see you an attitude kid. Yeah, yeah, I was an attitude kid. I hated WCW. <laughs> hated it with a passion. I could not could not watch it on TV. It bored the crap out of me. But yeah, I was an, I was an attitude kid, so I never really had a favorite wrestler. Like, I, I, you know, it was Austin Rock, but I never had one of those, like a wrestler that I've said, I want to be like that. Um, and never, yeah, never like that. I, my favorite wrestler used to be Road Dog, like, but I never had a wrestler that I was like, yep, yeah, that's that's what I want. He's my favorite. I don't care who else it is. Uh, you know? So there was sort of like little bits of different guys. You were like, I'd like that to be that. I'd like to do that. I'd like. It was, it was kind of like the flavor of the month. Yep. You know? uh, it was one one day. It was Road Dog. The next week, you know, Stone Cold did some cool. So Stone Cold was my fave. And then, yeah, so I won for many years. <laughs> how did the WWE, how did you get the WWE's attention, like, to, to get the tryout? Long story cut short, I actually received the WWE tryout when they were in Melbourne last year, um, on September 1st, in which there was about eight uh, Australian wrestlers there, which we uh, did the tryout at Rod Labour Arena in Melbourne, in which we were contacted by our email, um, I don't know how they how they got my email address. It could have been because I sent in tapes. It could have been, it, yeah, it could have been by sending them emails. It could have been by by anything. I'm not 100 percent certain on how they contacted me, but they did. And um, so we went down to Rod Labour Arena for a tryout in which we performed uh, matches with uh, in front of John Laurinaitis. Yeah. Uh, in and that tryout that consisted of like uh, Mikey Nichols, Shane Hayes, Jag. Um, and people like that. So it was it was it was, it was very uh, very uh, intense to say the least. Especially being um, in a tryout with the biggest company in the world uh, with those guys that you know that you actually look up to and you, you know you're amazed by just watching them in the ring. Like, yeah. So so going to that tryout in September was um, eye opening. Like I knew it, it kind of gave me a little bit of an insight with what I needed to do and what I needed to improve on. We got we did that um, before the show at Rod Labor Arena. So we did that. Um, we watched the show and then we pretty much left. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I got an email back from WWE saying uh, I got a message back from John Laurinaitis saying that um, I was a solid worker. I was very good, but there was no opportunities for me at that time. So <laughs> taking that on the uh, you know taking that on the chin. Yeah. I pretty much had to, re, you know, look look at myself and when when they said there was no opportunities, did they did they give you anything that you could work on or anything that like if you did this differently, maybe we could. Do you know what I mean? They pretty they didn't actually. They pretty much said that I was a, a decent worker, a very solid and stiff. Which I uh, asked if that was a good or a bad thing, and they said it was a very good thing. So, <laughs> You know, you, you don't know in, in today's modern day if uh, stiff is a good or bad thing. But in yeah. the WWE, it's a good thing. So, well, you, <laughs> you'd think you'd think possibly with John Laurinaitis' history in all Japan, that would probably lend itself to being a bit, bit more of a stiff working environment. Yeah, well, he, he really wasn't paying much attention. What you saw on TV is what he is like in real in real life. He sat ringside on his phone. Oh, okay. And, uh, 
you know, it was, it was great. Like, he was a really nice bloke. Everyone there was really nice. Um, and really, you know, it, it, it made it so much easier to, to, to be in such an intense environment. It made it so much easier because everyone was so nice. Yep. Um, but, yeah, we, we finished that tryout. Nothing came from it. And then uh, I decided to fly down to Tampa, Florida for a uh, tryout camp they were holding there. So Okay, so you did that sort of off your own bat, sort of. You're right, this is what I want. I'm going to do it. Me and um, a colleague um, were originally going to go down there. Like we, we had planned already going. So technically this tryout in Melbourne was just a, a bonus. bonus. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere. I, I was told on the Tuesday that I had to be there on the Saturday. Like, <laughs> okay. no notice, there was nothing. But, uh, yeah, me and a colleague decided to go down to Tampa, and we flew down there. We attended the tryout, in which, um, yeah, we, we, we did four days of hell, and and that, that's being generous. Like, hell was is underestimating what we went through. That was, it was the toughest four days of my life, and probably all everyone else's life as well. Oh, okay, very, very um, Vern Garnier sort of. The wrestling school type tough? Um, it was tough within, like, they were at the breakout. They, were, they wanted to see what you were made of. They were there to destroy you and break you and see what, uh, how you're going to come back the next day from it. Nice. And, yeah, we did that. Like, you know, it was me and my colleague were very, uh, yeah, we, we, we support each other a lot because if we didn't have each other, I reckon that, you know, it would it would have been um, yeah, we wouldn't have done very well at all. Fair, fair enough. How long after the Florida tryout did you hear that you'd been signed, or that they were interested in signing you? Uh, so within that camp, it was four days. There was actually there was about eighty five people um, at that camp. So after the four days, and in, in that eighty five, like uh, you had uh, NFL players, you had Ring of Honor people, you had former tough enough contestants and, and then you had so if yeah, it wasn't already intimidating enough you had all these guys that you knew had international experience yeah oh, it was it was ridiculous like going in there I'll, my, my colleague I'll, I'll let it slip but my colleague that I went over with was with I was with Mike Peterson yep Melbourne so he was he was pretty much my stone through throughout that so we helped each other out and to be honest we were the in the top, top ten smallest there. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, well, the, you know, on par with the shortest people there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we are going up against guys from, you know, ROH, NFL players, and very intimidating. And then, um, to answer your question, um, <laughs> after the four days, we, we were told who would um, receive a contract or who they were interested in. And out of the 85 people, I was the other one announced. Wow. So, yeah, it was very, very surreal. Uh, it still is today. You know, it's not real. <laughs> not until you get over there? Like, I, I guess. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people ask me all these questions. Like, oh, you know, you must be excited. I don't know how I feel. I feel like every other day, you know? Just, yeah things are happening now see I sort of on one hand it's it's a, the realisation of a dream but then you're also starting again from the bottom exactly yeah like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm willing to learn I'm, I'm you know I'm very very eager to learn as much as I can to take it and run with it for as long as possible and and yeah it's just, just uh, it's exciting to know that I've got such an opportunity and that I'm I'm, I'm gonna learn so much but it's Surreal in the fact that you know I'm just I'm still I'm still just I'm just a guy in Australia you know yeah just living day to day until then you know it's but um, I suppose it will hit me uh, as I'm getting on the plane I guess <laughs> do you um do you know where you're starting like FCW or NXT or I'm actually I started in NXT you start in NXT that's correct awesome um have they told you that like your name's going to change or have they they asked you to come up with a different name or no, nah, nothing of that. Like we pretty much just keep in contact quite regularly uh, via email. Just see see where we're at and making sure I'm good and making sure that I don't need anything. And you know we're, we're keeping we're, we're keeping in contact, um, which is good. So 
Yeah, no, nothing with uh, you know performance or anything like that. They're just making sure that I'm healthy and yeah, uh, you know, leading into it. Have you have you talked to Emma about what to expect when you're getting over there, or? Have I spoke to who? Sorry, to Emma or oh, to Neil? No, not really. Um, well, me and Neil are pretty good friends, so yeah, we we we, we haven't really spoke about it. She's obviously been busy over there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like. She was a very big support uh, for when I was over there originally anyway, but I'm sure uh, once I get down there, it will be, we'll catch up and, you know, we'll be working colleagues, so that yeah. should be good. With a lot of Aussies headed to Japan, uh, J- Jonah Rock and uh, Tama Williams, was, was that ever an idea of yours or, or did you always have your mindset on US and that was it, or the WWE and that was it? To be honest with you, it, it's... it's um, like, I, I always wanted to do something with wrestling, but I was too scared to fail at it. You know, um, like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, an A-grade student at school or, or anything like that. The only thing that I ever believed that I was really good at was wrestling. And it was scary for me to be able to go into a, like, you know, have a tryout or try and do something with my wrestling just to be told that I'm crap at it. I, I wasn't willing to take that risk. So I had a conversation with someone and um, we had a DM. And, you know, that person convinced me that, you know, I'll, there's no chance of me doing anything by sitting in Australia, like by doing what I'm doing. That's you know, right. To be noticed and do something and to be recognised for what I can do is by, you know, going out there and, and getting my name out there and, it was this, you know, it was really emotional, man. Like, um, it was just like one of those realizations that life flicked, life, life flicked in my head, and I knew what I wanted to do. Like, mm-hmm. I knew that I had to get out. I knew that I had to, you know, get get, get a better paying job. I knew that I needed to get out there. I need, needed to uh, get my body body in better shape. I knew that I knew all, that, all these little things, all these little chain links. You know, they'd mm-hmm. all formed together now and I, just, I knew what I had to do so I went out the next day and I did it all I got, I got the new job I started training different I started eating different I started to change yep. like overnight because this light in my head went off and I knew what I wanted and that led me otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it if this if I, this, I didn't talk to this person I probably wouldn't have gone over <laughs> That's I heard this person everything yeah are there any other Aussie wrestlers you could easily see in the WWE or anyone um, that you've worked with that you could like, this guy's another level sort of thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I could see, like I'd love to see Shane Hayes there. Like I reckon he's great. I reckon the, I reckon there's so many people, like I reckon Adam Brooks, like being, I don't know if it's a little bit biased because, you know, I helped train him, he's one of my, one of my best friends, but he... For someone his age to just, to just you know, just absorb everything that he's taught and seen and just incorporate it all into one hit, like, you know, he's, he's, he's grown faster than anyone else. And he's, willing, he's learning faster than anyone else. So that yeah. being said, you know, like, the sky's his limit. He could possibly be there. And that, that's, I reckon Jag could be there. I reckon... Uh, Slater could be there. I reckon Mike Peterson could be there. Mimic and Grimm could be there. Like, it's just, there's, I'm not saying anyone could be there. That's the thing. If you're willing to put in the hard hard work and get your body right and to learn, you know, and, and, and focus, like, anything's possible. And on that, you know, I've done that before. That's why I can say that. But with... The talent that's here, like we have a lot of good talent, and I've been, and I've, and I've seen overseas, and like, you know, we're up there. We've got some, we've got some talent to do. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. we, you know, it's just all about them getting their mind right and knowing where they want to go. Yeah, I, I recall I um, because I'm really very, very new in sort of like the Australian wrestling scene. I only started. I trained like started training last year. And one of the first matches that made me convince myself that I could train was watching, like, Grimm and Mimic. And at the end of it, my mate and I turned to each other and said, that was an ROH-quality match. 
Yeah. Like you could easily see that in the States. And I think the, the level of Australian wrestling has gone up so much in the last couple of years. It has, it has. And, pe- and like guys are, are getting more focused in there and they're starting to, um, you know, train more often and starting to hone their skills. And, you know, it, like if you, put, if you put an average match in Australia and you put it in front of a WWE crowd, you'd probably watch it and go, that was the best match I've seen all year. Yeah. It's because, like, you know, we're, we're so used to watching these basic matches on TV, you know, which, which WWE guys have to do because they have to, uh, you know, maintain their body and make sure that they're healthy. Otherwise, yeah. if they don't work, and if they don't work, they're not paying the bills. And it's also filling their spot on the card sort of thing. Exactly. So. You know, they're all in there for a particular reason. And it's a, it's a show. It's an entertainment show. Um, but if you took a, 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 gr- a grim mimic match... And you put in a WWE ring in WWE production, you're looking at match of the year. Yeah. Purely on by because it's on WWE TV and the yeah. way it's presented. Yeah, or well, even your match of the past weekend with Grimm. That was a brilliant match. Well, thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it was a, a, like a really, really good match. And because um, being that I called it, I was just. It was one of those ones where I said it earlier. It could easily be a main event on any card in the country. Thank you. Being that you've worked for a few promotions, which ones are your favourites or stand out to you in your mind that these are the ones that are doing the right things in Australian wrestling? Well, obviously MCW, Melbourne City Wrestling, is my home base promotion in, in Melbourne. So, you know, like I do rate them and I have been champion. I've taken a lot of pride in, in um, you know, being champion in MCW and, you know, bringing the belt over to RCW and getting recognised and and whatnot, like defending the... Like, you know, bringing the belt to Perth, to Adelaide, to wherever I need to go. Yep. So, like, I, I, like I'm very happy with MCW. I'm very proud to be part of it. Um, and RCW is right next to it. Like, I can't fault that. The production, the wrestlers, the guys backstage, the crowd. Like, I, I cannot fault RCW at all. Easily, probably the funnest places to work in Australia. Um, your last match in Australia is April 13th, the MCW Clash of the Titans versus Adam Brooks. Was, was this something that you've sort of you've requested for your last match before you went over, or was it just something that they said, we'd like you to work with Adam for your last time? I, I, I asked to wrestle Adam. Um, as you know, most would know, Adam's one of my best friends. Um... And I helped train him. So to wrestle him is going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of kind of special to me in a way, yeah. So, you know, I can say that I wrestled my best friend. Yeah. My very last match in Australia. So I won't forget that. And I hope, you know, me and Adam, we worked each other a couple of times. We trained together. So we're, we're technically identical, you know. We, we, don't, we, we, we know what we, we're doing. You know, without actually doing it, you know. So it's 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 great that you know we have such a connection in the ring, as well as outside of it, to make that special. Ah, well, that's about all the time we have. Thanks a lot, Matt Silver, and all the best for your trip to America. I can't wait to see you in a WWE ring, mate, and just all the best. Thanks a lot, Todd, mate. Recently on Wrestle Radio Australia. Our second best of episode featured some of our favorite guests like Scrap Iron, Adam Pierce. Brian Danielson's song in the was the final countdown yeah, 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 by, yeah. by Europe. Uh, Europe. They wanted $20,000 US per time it was played. So oh, Brian yeah. usually won, so that would be two times per show. That's 40 grand, and I don't give a shit who you were. We were paying 40 grand for anything. <laughs> and Mr. Juicy. I touched Christy Hemming's boobs. Also, Brian Alvarez joined Funky Sam Medina and myself, Josh Armour, to talk death of WCW, TNA, and the WWE Network. What good is watching a pay-per-view if you have not seen any of the bill leading up to the pay-per-view? It's not as much like, fun, no. Yeah, like you're gonna just go watch a standalone Halloween Havoc and all of a sudden there's there's the big show and the giant on a building with monster trucks. Like, what? What's going what on here? <laughs> Why are they in a building in trucks? <laughs> I don't get to see the television. It's free on iTunes, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, TuneIn Radio, and FNXStream.com. It's Wrestle Radio Australia.